Welcome to Goldfish on Games, where today we're going to be checking out a bit of an odd little device. It's a console, it's a light gun, and it's a controller, all in one. So let's check out the 8-bit TV light gun. The 8-bit TV light gun was made by Hayes, or at least that's what I have to guess from the packaging as I couldn't find any information about it online about the company, the hardware, or even when it was made. The only real things that I found when I searched for it was the auction that I won, and that Hayes must have released a light gun for the Dreamcast in the exact same mould. If we flip it over we find a sticker from what seems to be a seller in China. And we get a great example of bad English. Forbid the use of bad batteries but it does let us know that it's NTSE, which my TV does support. And we don't have to worry about it possibly losing any resale value when we open it up, as there's a crack in the plastic, so it's not really sealed anymore. The front tells us about some of its features. It's the 8-bit TV light gun. Multiple games built in. Ooh, I can't wait to find out what those games are. Multiple colours, of which I assume it means the hardware itself and not the games. Handheld play. I'm not sure how you'd play the games any other way. Three AAA battery operated. No main supply with this one. And with AV function. Because you've got to get that audio and visual. Now based on all this lot, I'm going to guess it's a Famiclone. But at this point I actually have no idea as we've not even opened it up yet. So let's get to it. As this is one of those crappy clamshell designs, we have to cut it open to get inside. Now I'm actually trying to be careful here as I don't know if there's a hidden manual between that cardboard or not. So I'm trying to go around the edges very carefully, even though it's not making it easy on me. And with all that done, we can finally take the contents out of the blister pack. And here we have the hardware itself. The power switch is the gun hammer, with up being on and down being off. It has a D-pad, which doesn't feel all that amazing to be honest, and four buttons on the front, which includes Start, Reset, A and B. And there's a fifth button on the other side which is Select, which is another indication that this is probably a Famiclone. Now where a magazine would go is the battery compartment, and just behind that is the AV cable, which ends with video and mono sound. And there's also this LED at the top of the gun. And it turns out there was no manual or anything, so we are on our own. So let's get some batteries inside, connect it to the TV, and see if it even works. And we get nothing. There's no lights turning on, nothing on the screen, absolutely nothing. And I did try with multiple different batteries. So after taking it apart and testing various points with the multimeter, which I forgot to record, I worked out that the power wasn't making it to the main circuit and I knew the batteries were fine, so it either had to be the contacts or the wiring. And it turned out the middle positive contact wasn't actually deep enough, or that the plastic hadn't been shaved down enough, so the battery couldn't make contact. So I added a blob of solder, and that was enough to make power flow. Thankfully it was an easy fix, but I can imagine people who would have bought it might have just thought that this was broken from the beginning. And with that done, it starts up with the menu proudly stating it's the 39 in 1. But if we take a quick glance over the list, we start to notice something. Lots of repeated names. So let's count them up and see what we have. 1. Duck Hunt 2. Jewelry 3. Wild Gunman 4. Volleyball 5. Hogan's Alley and 6. Aski Pengu so it's 6 games and possibly 33 variants of those games? As those other ones have names like Fancy Duck Hunt or Duck Hunt RRC. And it's actually quite interesting that they didn't even bother to rename them. Typically they would change the branding and do some graphical changes. But there is none of that in this menu. And did you also notice that the cursor to select a game is the copyright symbol? Whoever made this really didn't care at all did they? So let's try each of the games out and see what they've done with it, as well as check out some of the variations to see how they're different. As it's number one, let's go with Dark Hunt. 
and it looks like they removed any mention of Nintendo on the title screen. But they didn't bother to rename it. What they did do was to remove one of the modes. So all we have now is one or two ducks. There's no clay pigeon shooting for us at all. So let's check out one duck mode. And amazingly, the light gun itself doesn't feel too bad to hold. The trigger has a bit of pull to it and clicks quite nicely, and the game seems to work. But it does feel like it's very generous with how close to the target you need to be. As long as you're in the right general area, it seems to give you a hit. Which does make it relatively easy to play. It does still require a CRT to operate, as it still needs those exact timings to work. But it is just Duck Hunt, with all the ducks and annoying dogs that have become so famous. The outside of the missing mode and the removal of the Nintendo copyrights is exactly the same game. So let's move on to Jewelry, which is a game I've never come across before and it turns out it's a hack of the unlicensed game Magical Jewelry. And even here they removed the developer and publisher name, but left the copyright date. Once in game, it turns out it's a version of Columns. You move around groups of three jewels and you have to get horizontal, vertical or diagonal matches of three or more colours. After you clear a set number of jewels, you'll get the X-Block, and this will remove from the well all the gems that match the colour that it lands on, and the level will then tick up, with all the difficulty changes you'd expect with that. It's a fine enough version of Columns, even if it does feel a little slow to play. It also looks nice enough, though I'm not 100% sure why there's a Statue of Liberty as part of the background. So we might as well move on to the next game which is Wild Gunman, which like Duck Hunt seems to be missing its third game mode, as well as its copyright messages. The modes that are left are quite simple, targets come onto the screen from either the left or the right, shouts fire, and you need to shoot them before they shoot you. Manage it and you continue. In the one outlaw version, you don't really need to aim all that much, just shoot before they do is enough for you to move on. In the two outlaw mode, you have targets that come on from the left and the right. Either one or both will yell shoot, and you have to get the right ones in time. This mode seems a little bit more broken to me, as it doesn't always seem to detect the second shot. But again, it is just the original NES game, with a few bits removed. Which makes the fourth game, Volleyball, a little bit more interesting, as they didn't bother to scrub their copyright notices at all. It still has the Nintendo branding on the title screen, and it's even there in-game on that back wall as well. Now I am absolutely crap at this game, I just can't get into the flow of it at all. Partly because it's a sports title, and I've never really enjoyed sports games. But it does look like a direct version of the NES original, so if you know that, you know this. So let's get on to the fifth game, Hogan's Alley, which returns us to not having any copyright notice at all. But amazingly, they actually left the third game mode in, so we have a little bit more to check out. 
Now, as I can tell, this is the same as the NES game. You go along the alley, taking out targets while trying to avoid the friendlies. with its two different variations of play. And then there's the trick shot game, where you try and shoot cans to land on the post that will gain you points. I do like this mode as it's a little bit more tricky and more interesting to play, even though it really is just for a high score. The last actual game is ASCII Penguin, which turns out to be Penguin Can Wars, which was made by ASCII, and as such it's one of the few games to actually have its copyright info. The game itself is actually quite fun, you play as a penguin at the bottom of the screen and you have to throw balls to the top, all while someone at the top will be trying to throw them back at you. The trick is to try and hit them so they're stunned, but you have to be careful as you too can also be stunned if you get hit. To win, you need to get all your balls to the top of the screen. It's a basic but actually quite enjoyable game, though the D-pad isn't amazing, though thankfully the game isn't too demanding on it. And that might actually go some way to explaining why there's such a limited number of base games. As so many of the games you might expect on this device isn't there because the D-pad isn't all that great. So with that done, let's check out some of the variations. Fancy Duck Hunt has to be tried, and the title screen actually looks the same. I also don't notice anything in game, and after I play for a bit, I didn't notice any differences at all. And if you check out all the other variants, there isn't any real changes. No matter what game you play, all it seems is that they change the name and the rest of it is identical. I've not found any differences to the gameplay, to the graphics, to anything it does seem to be all the same, which is really quite disappointing. It's not like they sold this based on the number of games, so why did they feel the need to inflate the numbers? It's weird, the light gun itself isn't actually all that bad. It sticks quite nicely in the hand, even if the texture on the handle is a little bit spiky. So it does feel like the hardware was reasonably well designed, and then the software side was just rushed and half assed as I showed you a bit of the insides before, let's take a deeper dive into what's in this light gun. And at first glance, this side looks pretty basic. There's just a big old clock crystal and a select button being visible. Though we can see the light detector and this thing is huge. Normally it would be tiny and have this guard around it to help block out the light. This means it would only see a small part of the screen. Where this thing can see pretty much the entirety of it. So it's no wonder that I didn't really need to aim, or that second shot didn't always work. It was always seeing the majority of the screen. And on the other side of the board we find more buttons, and two glob tops, where I'd guess one is the Famicom on a chip, and the other is containing the ROMs. So it seems there's not a lot to really show, and there's no way of expanding it either. Now amazingly, after I closed it up to record more game footage, something odd happened. Jewelry stopped working. You would get the title screen, but as soon as you'd go in game, you would get this mess. It didn't matter how many times I'd try resetting it via the button, or turning it off and on again, all I could get was this broken screen. And it was only this game that broke as well, the rest were absolutely fine. So I am at a bit of a loss at how I managed to break a single game, but it did help to confirm something, and that is it really does just have 6 games as all the jewellery variants have the exact same issue. Now if there were modifications, 
then I would have expected each of them to have their own ROM. But this doesn't seem to be the case. Normally I really quite enjoy messing around with these family clones, as you're never quite sure what you're going to get. Is it an original title? Is it a weird sprite swap? You just never know. So this having just basic ROMs with a few bits of text scrubbed out, makes it feel a little bit of a missed opportunity, at least for me. So if you had one of these back in the day, and I hope you didn't, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. So until next time, I've been the Goldfish, that was an 8-bit TV light gun, and this was Goldfish on Games. Thank you for watching my video, I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, you can let me know down in the comments, or you can use those buttons just below, you know the ones I mean. Or if you're not sure yet, then you can check out two other videos that I've done that are on the screen right now. So thank you again, and I hope to see you soon.